Great. So far, we were able to see how our three different layers, API, the application, and the infrastructures, are put together as the onion layers, right? You know, a normal onion layer. Not, not sure if it's a vegetable or a fruit, but yeah, <laughs> whatever it is, right? We're in one layer exists inside and then outside it there's another layer and another layer another layer and as it goes out in that way we're in the outer layer most layer depends on the layers that you know are inside it as it gets in deep so how to actually see that is if you go to infrastructure and then click on dependency and you say add project dependency you can see that the infrastructure layer depend on none of the projects because it's never clicked there, right? But it does depend on some of the what? The packages. Of course, these packages only exist within that infrastructure layer. As we go outside to say the application, then you should be able to verify this by going under projects. You can see that the only project we got to import is the to-do infrastructure. The other layers, it's obviously just packages specific to the application layer. In this case, obviously, it's just your dependency injection abstraction and obviously the memory cache, which we should be removing sometime soon. And then the API layer will be only depending on the application. That is true, yes. We don't have to explicitly import the infrastructure layer in the API layer, the reason being is because when you say you're referencing application layer, then obviously application layer knows that it depends on the layer beneath it, which is this kind of keeps your code clean and nice in that way. And obviously that gives us a very big benefit of saying, should we wish to just change anything from the infrastructure, it won't have that much huge impact in the whole application at large. So with that being said, there was a few things that I decided to just change here to bring some more clarity on how we're structuring our data. And obviously, it's more onto the models or the entities that has to go to the database. So if we can just really look at the user details one, you remember we were just having a property called ID. This time we have a property called user ID wherein I put an annotation or an attribute there that specify this is a key and i'm using the system.component model dot annotation to obviously import this attribute so this will just tell it that okay this property is a key in entity framework and then make that as well in the database and i still kept obviously the username as not now which means i don't need any null values here whenever we are setting or inserting this user detail. So one thing I have to mention is this to-do details, it's not necessarily your foreign key, but rather it's called navigation. I think it's like a navigation property. So it just shows you that, okay, from this user details, you can be able to navigate some sort of to-do detail. I have to name this has to be a list instead of, I think I need to do something like that. Yeah, this has to be a list because it's a navigation property that says, okay, from a user, you can be able to navigate to a couple of these to-do details that happens to be a list somewhere. I'm going to do that. I don't need the last closing, so I just want it to be nullable so that I can be able to reuse this class. Then obviously under the to-do, the only thing obviously that has to change, we need to just denote the to-do ID, which is which was formerly called to-do, to be a key. And then we also need to say, hey, we know there's going to be a user ID, which is a foreign key, and this foreign key looks at the user detail thing. So it will be like, okay, this is a foreign key, which is this, and then it's gonna look at the user detail, object or class, and then obviously this is a navigation property, like we said, and then this is a foreign key to the external table. These are just normal properties in there. 
So for the category, I did the very same, kept, kept the key as the category ID, and we have other property somewhere there. So let's go to the to do category. I kept the to do category ID as the key, and as well as I added two foreign keys, which is obviously the to do ID and the category ID, which are coming from this two tables. So yeah, also denoted that the foreign key is coming from here, which means it will obviously always check in here anytime we are adding these to do foreign keys to see if they are sort of available in the database and you know kind of apply some constraints. This is very good in terms of structuring our data and as well as you know just kind of putting some safe rules around how we are adding data and as well much much cleaner so yeah let's move on so i mean i just need to confirm that uh my service collection has added the add singleton so the reason for me to do this is so that i can be able to import and use the cater to do context as a an injectable right so i just inject it directly here and then be able to just use it i mean formally you probably don't want to be doing this as most of these operations would be done on the infrastructure layer for me i'm just trying to cut corners so it should work so otherwise if let's say for example you would like to add a user into the database the way you would go about it it's going to be quite simple so let's say you want to add a new user detail so therefore you would just go to cater context dot user dot add and then you can just create an, an object like you would maybe this information could be coming from the front end let's say andy matozi that is the username obviously the user id will be created by default so then let's say cater context dot save changes you always have to call save changes so that your information can be pushed to your database so yeah that is it i mean if i can just start this and then just quickly show you how this would be like wonderful so there you go if i click in here since i didn't properly expose these types i can just give an empty object inside this to-do list um, alternatively i didn't even had to have this in here because you don't really need a user detail for you to add a to-do so if you just only exposed these other properties then you wouldn't need to be cutting corners there but otherwise let's if i execute then you should see this will be a success it's success therefore we should be able to see some data showing on the user detail table so i just said show all you can see that there's a user with a user id 10 which is auto generated and the username that i got to add there similarly if you would like to get that user you probably just have to say cater to do dot user id dot first or default or you can just say first and then make sure you put in your query to filter by the user id and then i mean you can just give it user 10 then it will obviously return you the user detail of the first person that is found here which means it's going to be a single object that is returned here and you can be able to use the data moving forward and it's that easy to just create an update or add into this database with an ef call but otherwise i'm not going to worry much about my user detail table so let's think of it as it's now sorted and it's now set up maybe let me use the very same approach to add a few things to the category table i mean it's similarly the same it's the same thing i mean you you could do this literally with your apis and you have specific apis 
uh, let's just say the name is the most required you can have specific apis to add this maybe as an admin or something like that then yeah uh, let's say health i'm gonna add a few here this is finance then there's gonna be peso personal let's say the other one is going to be career which and then let's say the last one is going to be learning so this is obviously like just the categories of your to do's so i'm just going to quickly go at them and then just for you know initialization so i'm gonna click start open here and i'm just going to refresh this and i'm just gonna run this obviously so that it can go ahead and edit one reason why i'm not worrying too much about this category and the user table is because our main focus is to how can we manipulate our to do's execute okay looks like everything went super well so then i went ahead and closed it category let's show the table data yeah looks like they were added right obviously it doesn't look so good with so many nulls but we were able to at least initialize our category into our database to query it definitely you just have to say dot category and then it will give you the access to do that and then you can filter however you want great now that this is working and we can see that we can add and get data from the database let's go ahead and add the first to do or the second to do at least into our database and to do it it's quite simple you just call the context and then dot to do detail and then you call the add method and obviously still receive the very same to do that is coming from the front end and make sure that you call save changes to go about it let's go on the ui here and then like i always said i can just keep this as an empty we don't have to worry about this section as it won't be added into the database so let's execute i expect it to pass and it looks like it did and obviously if now i go into the database i should be able to see new info added here just like that remember this section here where i said we shouldn't really add it <laughs> yeah it's gonna give us some trouble over time because if you can check here it keeps on adding rows that are null that are you know null 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 because obviously we have those navigation properties within the user details that will always kind of have some sort of a reference in here and you know it kind of auto detects that we might want to add these things obviously to the sub table there so how to go about it it's quite simple to go about it is quite simple i just have to go to the api project and then add a new folder called requests model and then i'll go ahead and copy the to do class from your infrastructure and then paste it there obviously just make sure you also update the namespace there and i mean you don't really need all these other notations because those are database specific also remove things like your um, navigation property because obviously that's the reason why we were having such an issue things like that and only allow or accept the things that we really care about in this case and then we can say uh, to do detail request i mean i was supposed to update the name as well and the name of the file is that so then we m then have to come to our controller and instead of just accepting is it add to do instead of accepting a to do from your infrastructure you then accept a to do detail request and obviously we just need to add a one additional line that goes and create a new object of to do details so that we can be able to pass it down 
for it to create some sort of a to-do within the database. And that is it. So if we go ahead and try to test it, I'm going to open. I'm going to try to refresh that. Um, I'm not going to add so many things, but this is, should be the working to do finally then we can be able to do magic like that. So if we go to our database and then we execute that, then at least we have it working to do. I mean, you can add other properties accordingly, but for me, I just want to add this working to do that belongs to this user. And obviously it creates its own to do ID. So <laughs> we good so far to be able to get it should be quite easy. You just have to obviously reference our context and then call the table you would like to get from and then first or default and then you pass in the ID of the to-do ID that you want to go and get from the database and it should be able to return that back. To delete, simple as well. You unfortunately have to call the get to-do. If there's a better way to go about it, well, um, or ears to go about it, but then fetch the to do using the above methods, and then you go and just remove that entity, and then it will know everything else that has to go with this removing a to do. And then, as well as the list, in this case, you just have to say, okay, let's say we want to go and fetch all the to dos for a specific user, you just have to go to do the details where the user ID is equals to a specific user and then obviously make sure that you map it back to a list because it brings back iQueryable. Thank you very much again for joining this wonderful series of about six episodes. Yeah. <laughs> and well, if you would like me to also explore other concepts like maybe the handlebars, maybe mediator R pattern and things like, you know, fluent validation, which I already have a video of in a separate uh, context, but if you want me to edit it to our API, then I'm happy to do that. And as well as being able to kind of, you know, test via Postman and as well as maybe write some sort of unit test on how the code is like. And as well, just to bring, you know, some more structure into the code that we have right now. One other very good catch would be, please try to find any bug or any flaw on how we approached this thing. I definitely know there is a flaw. But then if you can find it, then it will be very great. And don't forget to just join our free community on Discord, you know, when you can just ask me any questions specific to your problem and just for free and probably with other experts from the Discord channel. Otherwise, thank you very much.